with powder, you want to wear a mask. It's uh, airborne ground glass, so it's very bad for your lungs. All right, so let's take a start. I've got a number of powder colors here. I'm going to start with a white in the middle, okay? So I'm trying to figure out what you can see here. All right, I am taking scoops of powder. I've got three scoops of powder here, four scoops, five scoops, I'm trying to work it through. And then I have water, okay? We're talking really basic here. Now, you can have a squeeze bottle of water, that works fine. I happen to like to be able to spray it in there, to be able to, I'm getting used to the camera here. So what I'm trying to do, is get a consistency. If you're looking at this right now, it's way too dry, okay? I need a consistency that's gonna flow. And pancake batter consistency is a good thing to shoot for. And it's still too dry. Now, it's easier to add water than to take water away which is why I'm doing this in stages. And we still add more. There we go. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see that this is now flowing pretty well, okay? So I'm going to place it now. I didn't realize white on white here is not particularly good, but we're gonna get more colors in. I'm simply, scooping this onto the glass. And if you can see, it's expanding because it's basically liquid. I'm also going to shake this a little bit to get it to level out, all right? So this in and of itself is kind of boring. What happens, what becomes really cool is when we start using more colors. So I'm gonna scoop this over here. All right, close your powders so you don't knock them. You can see the powder all floating through the lights there. All right, so once again, I'm spraying, spraying with water and I'm mixing this up to, sorry, I keep moving away from the camera, to a pancake batter consistency. Now, I'm scooping this along the edge of the white that I just put down. All right. I'm gonna, whoop, that's not a problem. Just block some on there. 
So we're moving the blue around. A little bit more. Follow it around here. All right, so we now have a ring around the white. Clean your tools. And again, if I shake it, you can see it starts, it floats, and it's really cool. I'm going to do, take it now, and this in and of itself is okay, but not that interesting. I'm going to take tools. I have rubber tools. I have uh, metal tools. And you can draw and feather through the various layers. So you can do two to three of these. You can two to three rings. You can do different um, designs with this. And again, if you just jiggle it, it all comes back and fills in. I'm going to do more with this. I'm going to do more with this. So what I'm doing is replicating something similar. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, so it's something similar to that. You can then take another color, I'm going to do blue, I'm going to do green, we're going to mix this again. I lost my food, there we go. So again, it's really simple. It, the, really, the ratio of powder to water is I have to guess it's probably half again as much water as there is powder, but it's really by a visual. So I'm going to go under here, spray the water, I start, so I'm getting a glaze of water on the top and then I mix it and I look at it and it's too dry. So then I add more water. So I get something that is pancake batter consistency. This is a little, well, we're going to play with this. This is a little stiff, but we're going to add it around the edge here. Okay. And keep turning it. So it's literally, it's almost like uh, if you guys ever did spin art as a kid, it's the same, you're not doing the spinning part, but it's the same kind of effect. Have you ever actually tried spinning it out, like in the sink? I haven't. I okay. have an old turntable, yeah. and I thought, so here's the shape, get it to even out, okay? I have thought about using the old turntable and put something yeah. on it and try to spin it, because I think it would be really cool. So now I'm going to try to run the blue and the white through the green. And if, if you don't clean your tool, some of the green is going to go into the white, but that's kind of an interesting effect. So, along the lights here, shake it to make it get the effect. All right, so this is basic Fritz Slurry. 
And I always do the little shake because that's what evens everything out and makes it fill in and look the way you want it to. It it does in a way, it makes it more symmetrical, but the biggest thing is it fills it like, I thought, if you can see the, where am I pointing? If you can see right here, there's a lot of clear that's open there, but when I shake it, it fills right in and you get the nice effect, okay? All right, that one actually came out pretty cool. So let's try something a little different. So another way to work with this stuff is, let's do, we're going to play with a little bit of dry. I am forever using my tools on the table. I normally have a tool stand, so I can just pull them and put them back. We are going to do some dry powder around all right so this is just kind of a variation on it looks like nothing right now i'm going to brush this into submission into a circle A little bit of varying thicknesses just to make it different. Alright, so now Alright, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make some more of the blue. And you can Mix this stuff in uh, paper cups, plastic cups. I happen to like the silicon cups that I have here because they're real easy to clean out. They're real easy to mix in. They work really nicely. Uh, much as I hate buying from Amazon, Amazon has lots of them. So you can get larger ones that are uh, facial. Uh, ones for making of facial mixtures. So here we go. Um, so here I am, I'm spraying water in, I'm mixing it and it's still too dry. So I think you understand the key here is you don't want to put too much water in to start because then it's, well, basically you have to put more powder in, then you put more water in, you put more powder in, and you end up tracing the tail. So, what I'm doing here is I'm going to put the blue into the middle here. All right. So I built a little dam here. And then I'm going to put the blue around the edge here. All right, this is a little dry. Just add another squirt. And, yeah, this is going to be too dry. So you could solve that by just squirting right onto these powder, or the slurry that you've got right there. So, <laughs> all right, running out of blue. So, here, now by putting the dry down first, the dry sucks a lot of water out from the, the slurry that you just put in. But then that makes an effect. You can draw the black through. This is not drawing as well as I would like through like that. All right, 
So, sorry, this one is not drawing as well, but that's okay. We're going to keep working with it. We're going to bring the black through. Black through. And you can see I have a lot of open area. Bring the black goes this way, bring the black goes this way. So, this looks like a total mess, but watch what happens. So another effect, all right? And you can keep working with it from here. We could draw some more lines through and jiggle it, uh, but it gives something funky. All right, let's try. You don't have to do circles, okay? You can do waves. You can do different things with this. Oops. Paper mess. All right, so now I'm going to do, again, still too dry. More. So what I'm going to do here, how should I use this piece? And I am going to, now one thing that happens uh, anymore is if I let this sit, the water rises to the top. So if you're not going to, if you even just after 10 seconds, the water rises to the top. So you need to make sure that it is well mixed before you put it on the glass. So, here we go. All right, so I want to do, mix, 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 mix. I want to do a little pour this way. slurry up a little bit here, push the slurry down a little bit here, bring the slurry a little bit over here, add a little bit more in here. So I'm trying to get more of a wavy shape to this thing. And again, you do a little shape. Alright, exit out there. So, then, I'm going to dry the, try to make sure you can see all this. I'm going to try to dry some of the liquid that is starting to spill out along the edges here. This, of course I ended up with a piece of paper towel. This allows you to work a little bit with this edge for so I can now push this edge in a little bit more and define it a little bit more. I have one of these watches that buzzes me when people text me, so I'm like, stop bothering me. It's my husband asking me how things are going. 
so, which is very sweet of him, but was not now. Okay, so now I've got more of the form that I want. So now I can turn around and do some green. So we're gonna sweep and make a bunch of green. And the coolest thing is, it's just powder and water. Now you do have to be careful working with the powder. But again, too dry and that's okay. More liquid. All right, so now I'm going to put the green up against the blue. Get really a really nice kind of painterly effect. And I keep stirring because let me, let me see if you can see this. The not so much. The you not you can't see it with the glare. The water is rising to the top, and you need to keep stirring it. Okay. And this is a fairly forgiving process. Um, you don't, it's not like some of the things that you do with Mexic Frit that you need to be absolutely precise in how you mix it. Okay. Let's do that. So I need a little shake. And I need to shake over here because it's still kind of thick, right? And I'm going to do, again, with the paper towel, go along the edge here to soak up some of the water. And then, okay, I got a ton of water coming out here. water there. Alright, so then that means I can go back in and get more of the shape that I want. Alright. And adjust it from there. Okay. Alright, again, any questions? I will fuse it uh, both. I will fuse it just on a single layer, depending what I want to do. But if I'm making a bowl or something, uh, if you go to the OGT booth, I have a piece, a Fritz Story piece there that I did, uh, that's a bowl that's two layers thick, that I fired with the Fritz Story, and then I refired with some clear, just to give it some texture around the edges, and then slumped it. So. It's, uh, it's a cool thing that I did with the Fritz Lurie, so you can take a look at that. So you can do both, okay? So one last thing. Um, it's actually taking, I was afraid I wasn't gonna take very long because it's a very simple technique. Um, one last thing, oh, two last things, sorry. Um, you can use, that does not sound good, that's, yeah, it's grabbing frit everywhere. Um, you can use fine frit, but you will see that it's much grainier and it doesn't flow as well. So let's play with that for a little bit. It's all about playing. Um, it, the, the water just, it doesn't mix very well with the water, okay? 
But I always get questions, can you use the fine thread? I'm like, well, yeah, kind of. It, it doesn't, as you can see, it's, the mixture doesn't get, it, it gets too gloppy. So when you try to put it on, it will flow. I'm just gonna do that real quick. It will flow, but the, it's, it's not as nice and a smooth a layer and a smooth um, blending. You can see I still have a lot of thick and thin parts in it. Uh, I usually have to go in and actually beat it into submission. So, and then shake it again, and then add a little bit more. So we can do, and then again, it, it, it water just sucks out of it pretty quickly. It just doesn't like to flow as well as the house. But you can do it, and you can get a different effect with it. So. Uh, a little bit, it depends if you, if, if you take this to a full fire, uh, oh, and that's another thing you need to talk. If you take this to a full fire, it does kind of um, just, it doesn't give you much of a dimensional effect. It doesn't change it much. If you do like a contour, so you do get a little bit of texture with it, the, the fine will give you a little bit more to it. But sometimes what I do with the fine, I am creating a real mess up here. This is great. Sometimes what I'll do with the fine, I'm hoping this will work. This is starting to dry a bit. Put a little water there is I will do one of two things. What do I want to do? I will do a little bit in the middle there, which will give me, then I take a tool. This time I'm going to take a metal tool, a, palette, a very fine palette knife, and I'm going to beat this down. And then I'm going to stir a little bit and get the white involved in it and get the white back there just to give a little uh, dimension, for lack of a better word, a little variety. So you can see I'm getting, and then I shake it, and I'm getting, oh, again, the glare is really bad here. What you can see um, I tell you what, this, I'm willing to pass these pieces around if somebody wants to come up and get them. Uh, this piece right here, I did the same thing in the center, and you can see it kind of looks like a flower in the center. I put um, another color in the middle and then did some swirls with it, there you go, uh, with the piece to get an additional um, look to it, to, to not have just the, the total circle spreading out, to get something a little funkier going on. Uh, you can also do it with just doing it dry. Actually, I'm going to do, what am I do this? I'm going to do white, because I want the contrast here. That's in the place there. So I'm going to put some white in here. I'm going to test this. That's pretty darn dry. A little bit of water. And I'm going to put white in the middle there. Okay. And I'm going to put that down into the middle. This was powder. Okay. So I mostly work with powder. Occasionally, thank you, I didn't hear. Occasionally don't do the, uh, occasionally do the fine, but, okay, there it is. Cool. All right, and so here I'm doing the, what I was talking about before. I'm, I'm making some indents, I'm making some um, movement with the white to try to get just a little flare of something else going on with this thing. And you do your little shake. So now I've got another, no, I'll move that some more, I'll move that some more, I'll move that some more. 
There you go. I don't know if you can see. Again, there's the glare. There's a, a, a people again can come up and look at what's ended up here, but the thing in the middle is very similar to the piece that's being passed around right now, where the yellow in the center has got a, a more floral look to it. Okay? And it's all just playing with here, I know what we can do. It'll show up. Let's do this. How am I doing on time, Tom? Okay. Alright, powder again, black. I'm gonna just do that. Who knows why you want to do that, but you know. Okay? Gonna add water. And now I'm going to just touch this up. Cut this up. Now you can see it better with the black. Okay? It gives you oh, my arm in. <laughs> So yeah, I can get a little spiral thing going on, I can get a thing going on up here. And then more going up here. And then you do your shape. And it settles out. And now I have a megalodon rising up through the ocean ready to attack something. <laughs> Kinda what it looks like. <laughs> Here, can you do it that way? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there's lots of things you can do with the Fritz Slurry. It's a real basic technique. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can do, I'm working small here, but you can here. Ah, much better. Um, you can certainly work in larger bowls and um, make all kinds of funky looking stuff with it. Yes. I do both, okay? Um, it works well, like in, on this one here, the white is opal, and the blue and the green are translucent. So the white uh, screens through the blue and the green very nicely, so. And using a, like an opal yellow and a translucent yellow gives a really cool effect going through, so. In fact, I didn't pass this one around, I should've. Um, <clears throat> this was just a random, red and yellow kind of sun type thing playing with it. Ah, very good question. I knew I needed, I knew I had something I forgot. All right, so um, you basically fire them like you would fire any piece of this size, whether you're doing one layer or two layers. I fire, um, depending on the size that I'm doing, 300 to 400 degrees an hour, um, to the, and I work in 96, so to 960, and then I fire full from there to, now my kilns fire at, um, I get a full fire at 1440. So I, I'm using my headphones, I will fire, if it's a double piece, double layer, I will fire to a full fuse at 1440. I usually hold for about 10-15 um, minutes to make sure everything fires well. But but the powder fires in right away. I mean, it, it fires in early. Um, if I'm just doing a single layer, I will fire to a um, just above a tack temp. Okay, it fires in because it's so thin and because it's powder, it fires in very quickly. If you go much more than a tack temp, um, like 20 degrees above a tack temp you're going to start necking in on your pieces, okay? They're gonna start sucking in. So then um, just standard down, I anneal pieces of size. You only need to kneel for 10 minutes, not even, and then down from there. Yes, I dry my pieces. Um, here in Vegas, they're drying already, um, but I'm in New England, so it takes a while for it to dry. Uh, what happens if you don't dry it, um, the, you get the, the moisture coming out in the kiln, and you need to vent your kiln. And it's not a big problem, but it's just easier if you dry it. All right? We good? All right.
Thank you very much. Thank you.